Okay, welcome back. All right, so we looked at three points. The first one was being the best you, which is a holistic view of how we can become better. Second was emotional health. Third is personal management. The fourth one is relationship skills. Okay, these relationship uh, skills are um, those that we need to have in order to have a good relationship with our spouse. Okay, and there are specifically three areas that we're going to look at. One is communication, second is roles, and third is relationships with in laws. All right, communication. Okay, what is some is uh, a needed factor in marriage is communication, right? Uh, you express your thoughts, your ideas, your feelings, your decisions all through words and communication. Okay. Does communication only mean words? It also means nonverbal uh, communication, right? So you don't have to say anything, but then a lot can be made out by your face, right? Or by your actions, right? So communication is something that is extremely important. And very often, one of the reasons, a, a big reason for marriages to break down is because of a breakdown in communication. And so that's, it's very important to build that. All right. Now, uh, I, for, so, so sometimes we may not be very used to, depending on our upbringing, right? Or uh, maybe our early experiences in school, in college, we may not be very used to talking to people of the opposite uh, sex, right? And suddenly when you get into marriage, you're expected to know how to discuss and talk. And sometimes that can become a huge a challenge and a problem uh, in itself. Yeah? Okay? So how do we... How do we build communication or what should, and, and we're going to be looking at that in chapter six about uh, communication, okay? What, what is it things that we need to take care of and uh, how do we build good intimate communication with our spouse, all right? So uh, another way, another part of communication is the way that you express your feelings, right? Again, maybe, in some of our cultures, probably in the in the in the Indian culture that we are in, we are never uh, actually taught or never helped to express our emotions. Is that right? We are. If if you are sad, they'll say, "Stop being sad. Why, why can't you be happy? Why, what happened to the smile on your face? Or if you are crying, what are you, little child, to cry? If you are angry." No, you shouldn't show your anger. Anger, that's a bad thing. Right? So we have been taught in some way or the other that expressing and communicating our emotions is not a good thing. So what do we do? What do we do? Boys. Girl. We suppress it. Yes? What does suppress mean? We push it aside or we, we ignore it. Right? We don't allow that to come up. And then what happens? You're like a Pepsi bottle. What, does, what happens in a Pepsi bottle? If you shake the Pepsi bottle and then you open it, what will happen? Everything will come out, no? Yeah, explode. Yeah, and it creates a huge mess. So much so that the mess is on you and the mess is on everybody else. Right? So a very important part of communication is not just talking about... Hi, my name is Jean. I work here. I think it's also to say, you know, today I'm feeling very upset that my students are not talking. Right? It is communicating what I'm feeling. Right? Or I'm hoping that all of you will talk next. I'm going to come with hope next week. So I'm sharing an expectation with you. Right? I'm just giving you an example. Okay? But that's what that's how we build our communication to be able to express not just facts. It's easy to communicate facts. Right? Do you have my book? When is the class starting? When is the class finishing? But to express 
emotions and to express our thoughts and feelings takes a little bit of effort and even you're opening up, right? So that's what you need to do in, in communication. Also, when you are upset or when something is going wrong, how do you express it? How would you express something when... Uh, so I'm going to give you an example. I'll tell one, I'll tell you, I said, from tomorrow, none of you can come to my class. And I'm not giving you an explanation. So how would you express it? Huh? Sorry? No, no. How would you express your, your confusion? What would you do? I'm telling you, I'm telling all of you from tomorrow, don't come to my class. Stay outside. I will, I will teach only the online students. Tension. Uh, how will you express it? Yeah. So you can question me, right? You can say, uh, why, why, why did you do that, or what happened, right? So, but there, are, what happens at other times? We may just keep quiet. You no, know, uh, Jean said it, so don't ask questions. No, you express it. You ask. You know, I don't understand what's happening. What's going on? Or you may get very angry with me. You may puncture my car. Right? So. You know, so how do we? And I'm just, I'm, I'm just getting all of you to wake up. That's all, hundred percent, huh? Akil, <laughs> right? So how do you express it matters, right? Or if you're very angry with me, you won't show me, but you will show it on the dog or on the door or something like that. So that matters, right? How I am expressing the emotion that I'm. I'm just giving you an example so that you all stay awake. Okay, not that any of you are going to do that. So to, to. To really know when I'm feeling something, how do I, how can I communicate what I'm going through? And that's also in marriage, it's so important of learning how to communicate what your feelings and your emotions are. Okay. So communication is a big part in marriage. And that's something that needs to be worked on. So maybe, maybe as a as a man, if you find it difficult to, to talk to women or vice versa, build uh, good communication skills. Start conversing with people of the opposite sex so that you know how to talk and what, what are the conversations you need to make. It's a skill that you build. Okay. Next is roles in marriage. To clearly understand what are the roles that you have in marriage. And the Bible is very clear about some of the roles that is for a husband and a, and a wife. So what will you be responsible for? What are the things that you you will you have assigned that you will take up to do? Okay, and also, are you willing to support and be flexible in taking other jobs or roles that that in your mind you think that is not for you to do? So, learning and understanding about your roles as a either as a husband to be or a wife to be is again very important. Thirdly, it is your relationship with your in-laws. Sorry, I'm going to take this off. OK. Your relationship with your in-laws. All right? Um, uh, again, we, we spoke about some of this. What are the kind of boundaries you will establish in your relationship with your own parents as that also with your in-laws? We spoke about some part of it last time, right? to have that sense of a healthy space or a healthy connection and a healthy separation. Not being too involved, neither being too distant. But uh, the, the husband and wife forming that one, uh, one person oneness so that there isn't too much of an interference from the outside. Okay, And also to, uh, to know um, what are some of the guidelines that you must establish in case you are going to be living with either parents or in-laws, what are some of the rules or the, or the uh, relationship guidelines that you will have so that there isn't too much of an interference, OK? So that's about relationship skills, all right? So being prepared for that. OK, next one. Any questions here? No? OK, so we'll go to number five, which is? Overcoming past abuse, trauma, and negative experiences. Um, 
throughout life, we all may face some kind of experiences and situations in our life that can be unexpected. Okay. Uh, and this, these situations can significantly affect us. It can make us feel hurt. It can make us feel emotionally um, burdened, broken, right? And when we do not deal with this, we take some of this even again into marriage. All right? But our what we need to know is that God is the one who can help us and help us overcome some of these past situations that have happened. Uh, so, so when we, uh, I think often the issue is that whenever you feel this, whenever you, if you faced a problem, the understanding is that if I get married, everything will sort out. If I have someone to love me, all of this will sort out, which is not true. Okay, because these can really come up very severely in marriage. So any of these situations we are going to look into should be dealt with, uh, either by you know getting the help and support of someone who can talk to you about it, or where you can talk about it, you can understand it better, and get the healing and the restoration you need through prayer, through God's word, through counsel. It's important to do that. Okay, so what are some of those situations? One could be abuse. If anyone has been a victim of abuse, whether it be physical abuse, emotional abuse, sexual abuse, all of this has a way to hurt the person in their spirit. There can be, usually, you know, abuse generally happens with a known person. Right, and so what gets lost when the abuse is by a known person? Okay, love and affection. Uh, what else gets lost? Trust. Yes, trust. You trusting somebody to protect you and take care of you. Yes, trust. That's right. Uh, and they have violated uh, your very uh, the very aspect of your life. Right. So, so trust sometimes becomes a huge issue. And you're walking into marriage, uh, into a very intimate relationship, sometimes not being able to trust because your trust has been broken maybe as a child or as a young young person, right? So those are some of the thing that needs to um, be dealt with, OK? Daniel, sir, I think having a partner can lead both individual to overcome many problems, OK? So I think, Daniel, it's important to understand that. Uh, I'll give you an example. Suppose a person who has been abused physically, let's say, has been through physical abuse, you know, been very strongly beaten up by their parents as part of punishment. And, and I don't mean just through punishment, but a, a, a whole lot of a, a greater level of abuse is getting married and comes to another partner um who can who may be controlling right who has a personality of being of controlling and now when people do not heal from that they are bringing this baggage into marriage right and uh, each person does not understand why they respond the way they do so to help each other in that can be a greater struggle because when you're going through personally so many issues to help the other person get out of it especially when this interaction is happening between the two of you, can be a challenge. So uh, both the individuals working together to overcome something may be a dangerous thing. It is important to be, to be able to address it even before you get into marriage, understanding that these kind of experiences can definitely cause deep emotional uh, wounds. Uh, and uh, they need to come to a place of exploring, understanding, healing, restoring from it. So that can be a journey, but nevertheless, as long as you are in the, uh, in the, in the process of doing so, OK? So that's why we, we suggest that it is important that it is done uh, you know, even prior to marriage. All right. Um, yeah, so we said about abuse. Now, it's, it's important that um, in no way, so what happens is when, let's say, there is some kind of abuse that happens as a child, it tends to get carried on 
to your own marriage right you maybe you've seen your parents being violent with each other it appears like that's the way of life that's how i've seen my parents do it and this is how i will do it in my marriage right so and that's why it's important to understand some of these experiences need need a restoration so that it is not carried into marriage as a known or a norm okay next is addictions to be able to uh receive freedom and uh keep away from any form of addictions whether it be any substances whether it be any kind of uh, sexual uh, um, perversions any of that okay keeping away from addictions certain negative environments and experiences home environments can also lead to difficulties all right are you all here yeah okay one as when there's unfaithfulness if you have seen unfaithfulness in your own home or uh, you know one of the parents have left or one of the parents are having an extra marital affair um you know how have you responded to it what is the pain you've gone through how have you reacted to it and what are your thoughts about it as you enter into marriage that's important to deal deal with okay i'll come to your question daniel okay uh next is separation or divorce that is you know very often you see in marriages that people threaten divorce and separation left right center any one fight will say okay let's have a divorce it becomes like a like a like a the sorry thank you word in marriage right it just it's just thrown out so that's something that you do not resort to do whether in your thought or even in your speech um coming to a place of refusing to make those statements rather than bringing about divorce it's saying okay how can we work through this how can we how can we deal with this then next is incorrect models and learned behaviors there may be certain things our parents would have done wrong okay like things i can i can examples i can think of hand is maybe we are very anxious parents for everything they worried that like you go out on the street okay when are you going to come back uh, you know what time will you come back and they're waiting at the door or you know they're unduly being worried and that sometimes can uh be followed by children as well because that's what they've grown learning or any situation you deal with in anger and that becomes a wrong example so certain behaviors that we we certain certain behaviors or certain um Uh, incorrect models are things that we sometimes unconsciously follow right and that's something that we need to be aware of how do i respond in certain situations and uh, ask the lord to help us to make it patterns that will glorify god right whether it's in our emotions or in our behavior maybe it's in our spending maybe we've seen our parents being very very stingy don't give money to anybody keep it to themselves you know not give it to the children also all that becomes wrong models god has called us to walk in freedom freedom in every area and to be able to follow that last one is any kind of previous relationships any kind of emotional or sexual relationships that one may have had in the past to cut off from it to heal from it to seek repentance to get have the forgiveness of god and to move forward and to also ensure that there aren't any of those relationships that they will take forward okay so the fifth one was overcoming any kind of abuse or past negative experiences okay okay daniel has a question can we say that preparing for marriage can give the assurance that we won't have problems in life or learning is different from practical life because many people give good advice but when it comes to practical life they stand nowhere okay preparation in no way uh i i'll come back to your question sorry i do not know how to pronounce your first name gertrude gertrude a uh, gertrude gertrude okay thank you so i'm going to call you that right so daniel uh, preparing for marriage in no way will insulate you from problems there are going to be problems there are going to be difficulties 
it just helps you to learn to deal with it in mature ways okay so uh, preparation uh, is a personal journey and so also is dealing with problems is also a personal journey um so let me give you an example if i if i am not prepared uh, i'm talking about household skills okay let's take something as simple as that if i'm not prepared uh, in knowing how to take care of a house and i just get into marriage thinking um, uh, thinking saying that okay maybe i'll get two maids all right when i when i have a house man i get two maids to do all the work uh, so there won't be a problem right now when i get married i may be getting married maybe not in a i may not be in a very good financial situation in my marriage we may not be in a good financial situation so then what happens right i'm demanding for two maids and probably my husband is saying you know we don't have the finance to keep two maids we both should work and figure out how to deal with this and so then there are conflicts that happen could i have avoided this yes how could i have avoided this one is actually doing some household skills learning how to do some household skills the second way that i could have avoided it is being more understanding being more aware that that you know in maybe in the initial years of marriage um, you know finances can be difficult so you know i need to support be a support to my uh, husband in order to deal with things or third is improving my communication in in asking help from my husband to cook together so th these are things that actually help in your preparation right because you can avoid many situations if you are prepared like i said that doesn't mean you're not going to have sit uh, difficult situations um, you will but it will help you to navigate it a lot better it helps you to understand what are some things that can be avoided and what are some things that need to be worked on so all of these skills together really help in being more uh, being more prepared in learning how to face it learning how to face a certain challenge and an issue okay daniel i hope i answered that question okay right uh, gertrude would you like to share i think you have a question Yes, sister. This is. Uh, I want to ask you about in my family. Um, like, uh, I have a person like who is not able to take counseling. She has been to trauma, trauma, uh, divorce, and she has anxiety, panic attacks, and uh, she's been through a lot of mental trauma, but refuses to take counseling. or even prayer or any medication how to mm. deal with this person mm. yeah it can be a challenge when they're not willing to take any kind of a support at all uh, either through form of spiritual help counseling even medical support um, if yeah. that is so and if you have i i think if you do have a good connection with this person um, it may be helpful you know you probably sowing the initial seeds of just being there with the person maybe listening to them encouraging them supporting them and over time uh you know saying you know letting them know that your ability to support and help may be limited and it may be helpful if they can actually get support so what happens is when people refuse any of these um uh any of these help help systems helping systems mm -hmm. we also may tend to just push back right as as their well wishers yeah. or friends or family but it's at least you being there can be helpful for them to just vent or just to discuss or just to be open because over time uh as they build their trust in you as they build their belief in you they may be more open to seeking help outside so i would suggest you continue supporting them helping them just being a good listener just encouraging them maybe praying with them in on your own if they're not willing to have you pray with them directly and um, in time suggesting and building uh, that kind a different kind of a support system can be helpful thank you sister okay all right okay 
Um, well, let's go to the sixth point. The sixth one is sexual purity. Um, what does we spoke about this? What does scripture say? It is to keep your marriage bed honorable. It says honor marriage. And one of the ways of how we keep the sanctity of marriage is through sexual purity. So when we're looking at this point, it is to, uh, number one, bring ourselves to God's word and, and understand that God desires sexual intimacy to be only in the confines of marriage. That's where the blessing comes in. All right. So even as young people, all the young people here preparing for marriage, to making a commitment to God that any kind of sexual experiences uh, or intimacy will happen after marriage. Okay, You are keeping yourself um, holy to God, pure to God, till the time uh, you're married. Now, we do, you know, we also know that there are times that people fall into sin, uh, especially in this area. But coming to God, seeking forgiveness, seeking His repentance, and making a commitment commitment of leading a pure life is absolutely essential. All right. Also, in this area of sexual purity is to break away from every sexual addiction, whether it be pornography, masturbation, homosexuality, any kind of sexually explicit material. Right? To break away from any of those addictions and to ask the Lord, the Spirit of God, to take control of every sexual appetite and sexual passion and to keep that pure um, uh, till the point of time when you are in marriage. All right? Uh, because this one area often becomes a hidden sin. Right? And, and many people in marriages also come with this hidden sin without coming to a place of forgiveness and restoration and dealing with the pain and the burden of it. And there can be struggles that come about. So it's better to walk into marriage pure rather than walking into marriage tarnished and then having a whole lot of things to deal with. Okay, So that's sexual purity. Okay, there's a question here. How to deal with people who have good knowledge about marriage but not able to handle it practically? You send them here for the course, Daniel. For an intense six month course on marriage, we will um, hopefully get them practicalized. All right. Okay. The seventh one is Christian maturity, calling, and ministry. So, another huge part of preparation is your personal spiritual growth as well as your calling as a believer. So, um, when you're walking into marriage, you're not hoping that your spouse will um, help you in your spiritual journey. Your spiritual growth is your personal responsibility. Your walk in relationship with God is your personal responsibility. So growing in your, um, in your relationship with God is of utmost importance whether it be a devotional time, whether it be um, reading the word, whether it be further studying, praying, fasting, anything, anything that has to do with your spiritual growth is your responsibility. And going into marriage, being prepared in that is a good thing because you know that's something that will hold priority no matter what comes your way, whether it's marriage, whether it's work, children, whatever, that will hold priority. Also. How would you and your spouse work together to spiritually uh, enrich and grow together is another aspect of preparation, maybe as a part of discussion. The next is Christian calling, which is knowing that each of us have a purpose and a plan in the kingdom of God. And God has a specific calling in our life, something that God desires for us to do, knowing that God's authority is over my life and that's what He wants me to carry out. Right? So understanding what is it that 
what is your personal calling understanding what is the calling of your to be spouse as well right because if your callings are very different uh, the compatibility may not and that's what we will look at next chapter our compatibility may be mismatched for example maybe one of the uh, one of the spouses one of the partners wants to do ministry in uh, the villages of india whereas the other person wants to go maybe somewhere else abroad to do a business is there a mismatch yes right so actually understanding that and really sharing what the calling of god is for your life really helps the other person understand and know whether this is a uh, this is a calling that is there for this because at at the end to really support each one to complement each one's calling is helpful that doesn't mean you need to do the same thing that's not what it means but in some way be able to support and strengthen each other in their calling or if there is something that you can do together uh, for god's kingdom you know how how is it that you all can work that out so that's again another important thing that you need to need to do so what is your individual calling and what is your collective calling as a couple all right now um as part of our ma marriage preparation course in apc we take all the couples through the sentai book and especially this lesson to help for them to discuss some of this because these are very very important aspects in mar in marriage right it's like your first level interview you know when you go for interviews in a company your first interview second interview third interview this is like your first or second level interview where you're actually asking to find out you know what kind of a person are you how are you preparing yourself so that we can get together into marriage so this is something that we ensure that um, we get people to do and openly discuss right it's always better to break off an engagement than to than to huh than to break a marriage than to break a marriage ayo oh, you're all sleeping okay yes thank you i think there was lucy or uh, yeah or, but but yes it's always better to break off an engagement than to break off a marriage so if you do not see either uh, and we'll be looking at some signs of immaturity you know how do you know that someone is not ready for marriage we will look at some signs of immaturity the next week um uh, so then it's always better to 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 not get married to a person you know uh, does not fit right remember that uh, even when we're looking at this um someone can be a believer yes but they may not be in the same emotional a uh, space like you are or they may not have the same life calling or they may they may be coming with a lot of uh, personal difficult uh, difficult burden and issues that they have not dealt with right so they may be believers yes but you do do find some of this and that can be an again an, another incompatible relationship so preparing yourself is extremely needed so you do your part and when you when you found someone to get married i will suggest get them to read this book too and discuss these points in in length in depth because you will get to understand the person you want to marry and if it isn't a if you don't see it as somebody uh, who matches with you it's always okay to to part ways right so doing this is extremely important all right i think there's a question how to make a couple on the same page when they have different thoughts okay you may not be able to make to get the couple to think similarly i think it's important to know if they're willing to work towards common goals um you 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 will have very few examples of people who can think the same okay we are all made differently we are all we've come from different backgrounds our experiences are different so you may not be able to get them to think the same way but you can you can help them to come together to understand how they will work through those differences and that's the strength of marriage if you look at most marriages people are are, are 
polarly different from each other. But when how do they come together is because they are willing to use their differences as a strength. And that's what you're aiming to do through these discussions and this preparation. OK, all right. Yes, uh, ma'am, since all of us are into the ministry now, OK, so is it good to also look for somebody who is also into the ministry? One. The second thing is, if the other person is not into ministry or at least having a little on a spiritual level or a compatibility like a you know, ministry to help so that it wouldn't hinder, or is it OK to go ahead with someone who is not into the ministry but into uh, 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 hmm. things because we always get captioned with just the word believer believer and we just uh, hmm. you know hmm. Hmm. so i i think it's important um so again this may be a very uh, generalized question but it uh, first of all i think you need to know what you're looking for right so if you're looking for something suppose you want to do a ministry in a certain place Right, which means you would may want your partner also to join you to that certain space in the ministry. So you are very clear that you want someone who should be part of you in your ministry. Right? That means that means you should look for someone who, who is uh, who is uh, willing to join you in your ministry. There may be someone else who says, you know, I want to do ministry, and I'm willing to do ministry. Let's say in in the state in the city of Bangalore, and I I plan to maybe build a, maybe a center for children uh, so, and, and you know I want to do that and that's something I am called to do but I'm perfectly okay what my wife wants to do if you're able to support in some way it'll be great but then I'm not really looking at you to support um, you know you can you can carry out whatever calling God has for your life so then I'm very clear that you know I'm doing this but I'm willing to support uh, my my spouse and what they want to do, but then I I have a desire that I want to do it in this city. I have this 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 plan like this. Suppose my spouse says, you know, I my idea is to travel abroad. My idea is to you know probably become the CEO of the company that I'm in. So you understand that that could be a mismatch. Although you're okay with them probably having a secular job, but maybe not. But it should be in the city of Bangalore. So that kind of a conversation helps you to understand if that's a good match or not. Right. So I think it's a personal discovery and decision to know what is it that you would want to do. Like I know of uh, couples who have who are working in jobs, but they say in 10 years down the line, I will want to leave my job and do ministry. Right. And that's something that you should convey to your spouse, because if that's not something that they have in mind or that they're willing to do, then that can be a issue at that point of time. So that's why knowing what God is calling you to do, you know, is a is a good thing uh, to discuss and have with the wife. So I don't think there is a one specific rule because there are so many people who are in ministry who have their spouses working in uh, other other jobs. Right. But as long as maybe they, they're okay to just come together, maybe one day, maybe on Sunday, just to serve the church, right? But the other person's doing ministry. And so it really depends on what you are looking for in your, uh, when you're looking at God's calling in your life. Okay. All right. Any other question? We have 10 minutes. Okay. So if you don't have anything, I want all of you to turn to page 21. You see a table there? You see a table there? All right. And it says preparedness rating, which means you're going to take each of those aspects, those areas, and rate yourself. One is the least, and five is the best. So rate yourself on all those seven areas, okay? whether you're one, two, three, four, five, and look at what are some of the things you will begin to work on. Start with one or two things in each area. OK? So go ahead, do that. Gertrude, you have a question? No, sister. No, OK. Lucy, you have a question? Yes, sister, I'm here. Yeah, go ahead. Sister, how can I help my daughter in getting married? Because she always uh, says no towards it. Okay. Uh, I uh, What I pointed out is that she's not ready to take up the responsibilities. 
mm-hmm. or worried that they may not allow her to come back to her parents house as in well she feels like is this some... that, yeah Go and uh, mom she says she wants to focus on her career hmm hmm okay is this something she told you or is this something that you have you... one thing she told me is that about her career and uh, they may not allow and what i point out, pointed out is uh, i found it that as uh, most of the thing is the responsibility which is not ready to prepare mm-hmm. for it okay yeah so uh, sometimes marriage can look very daunting because mm-hmm. of the kind of information that they've heard about it right um yes, like, because the friends she meets and speaks to them yeah office. yeah that you know the stories that you hear from uh outside sometimes can scare you in marriage right and that's why just going through this course helps you to understand what is what is the biblical way so yeah. uh, i think a recommendation that i have is you know if if since she knows you're doing this course one is sharing some learnings that you are having every week um yes. and you know helping her see that it needn't you know it's not something to be feared god is blessed it god god can make something very beautiful out of it uh, and the second is for her to really address maybe areas that she is uh, keeping away because uh, it could be probably because of her age or because of what she's hearing but getting into a conversation maybe even just discussing some of these points can help like the fear of you know i won't be allowed to let go to my parents house it's something she can discuss with her partner when it comes you know what are your thoughts about me going to your my parents house every week you get to understand that right or what are your thoughts about me working uh you understand that because different people have different viewpoints it's only when you're actually talking and discussing about it that you get to see so encouraging her to uh widen her perspective according to what the bible says rather than what has been discussed in the world outside yes yes sister thank you i think a better option is to take her to any of the pastor for premarital uh, counseling yeah Will, yeah 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 absolutely okay yeah. okay yeah thank you sister thank you. yeah yes daniel so what about the book this has been useful yeah it has i think we will be making reference to it slightly in chapter 4 when it is um, when we talk about roles in marriage so we will bring about some of those thoughts in the chapter as well okay so quickly page 21 uh, rate your preparedness and what are one or two things that you will do to prepare yourself in each of those areas it's a practical christian maturity in calling what will you work on one or two things that you will work on in each area You write the yeah, the book is your own no you write in the book if someone gets a book at home huh? <laughs> here huh? oh too many rats are here huh? then you can write it in your book no problem <laughs> Okay anyone would like to share any one area that they want to work on you don't have to tell me your rating any one area that you've decided to work on 
even in the online, the students can share. Any one area and what would they like to work on? Any, anything that you all are comfortable to share. Sister, can I share something? Uh, yeah, yeah, just a minute. Uh, uh, my name is, uh, uh, Ruth, just a minute. Well, uh, somebody sharing here. Once they share, okay. I open it out to you. Yes. Yeah, maybe you can speak on the mic. Uh, I've just written overcoming past abuse, trauma, negative experiences. Um, uh, since I'm in a transition, so I've just written it as, uh, uh, you know, areas where I need to overcome that because um, there has been a lot of hurt and uh, uh, thing that I've gone through on a bitter note. So it, uh, uh, I've just written that too, simply because, you know, uh, I know God will heal. And um, in a phase where, you know, God is actually working in all other areas in my life. And it, it uh, by getting more stronger and rooted in his word, uh, uh, it will help me in the longer run, you know, not to just uh, fall back on the past thinking that, you know, even the future also will be a reflection of that. Because um, uh, I was just thinking back of my mind before doing this exercise, you know, like uh, we all go through Christian counseling through churches and all. But one feedback, uh, it's, it's from my heart, I'm just sharing it, is that, you know, most all churches, in fact, do a lot of Christian counseling when the slates are actually very clean and neat. When somebody has just got into a relationship, getting into a relationship, it's like a rosy phase, you know, or pastors, everybody, it's like, you know, it's uh, uh, we uh, counsel and they, they do a lot of counseling. But then everyone, for everything, it's like a tick mark. It's like fine, 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 fine. But what uh, my observation and thing is like, you know, if there's a follow up type of a counseling after a month, after a year or how things are actually thinking rather than, you know, trying to address the issue, uh, situation when it has become too grave. So that's a little thing. But uh, yeah, personally, I just felt uh, God has given that grace and is working in me to just overcome. So he has a, a new plan and uh, things ahead. Yeah. Sister, you are on mute, sister. Can you hear me? Yes, sister. Oh, sorry. I'm so sorry. Yeah, so I was saying that um, uh, usually what Akil mentioned about, you know, walking with them in marriage when it's all a rosy honeymoon phase. Yeah, so six months you walk the, the walk with them. After they get married, you're just seeing them here and there. It's just superficial conversations. Something I always tell my couples is that, you know, at the beginning of something that you feel is going wrong, rather than sitting on it, immediately seek support and help, right? And so I think it's not just maybe for the counselor or the pastor to keep following up, because they may, they may not, especially, you know, after a point of time, how many people will they be, be able to support? But as young people getting married, if you see the first signs, evidences of um, uh, uh, arguments, conflicts, disagreements, which are common, but when you come back to your support of a counselor or a pastor, they can help you to navigate it right in the bud. So there is sense in saying, nip it off at the bud. That is, whenever you see something before it grows into a huge oak tree nip it off right in the beginning take off the weeds right at the beginning so and that's something i want to share with all of you whenever if they, there is something you will face which all of us will face take the courage to go and discuss it with somebody you don't have to be ashamed take that support and help rather than allowing it to go so deep that you know there may there may not be a turnaround well add on to what it is uh, since most of them are connected online and offline uh, the common mistake that also people actually do is like land up trying to reach out to a third person mm. or, you know, Usually like to their own. Member. Yeah, absolutely. It will be like family side on both the sides, immediately, whether it's a guy or a girl. Mm. 
right but rather you try to reach out somebody who's uh, associated with the church within the church right. like a neutral ground yeah, right. and then it doesn't go beyond the four walls and it's maybe people are aware but at least it is addressed and it does not you know Correct. burst out where things go beyond right control. yes i think it complicates it when sometimes insensitive family members uh, family members who are insensitively dealing with it uh, is affected because they tend to take sides and so then you know the the issue becomes worse off so absolutely agreed uh, yes gertrude you had a question we'll take your question last yes Oh, yes, I'm. Uh, mine is about uh, number seven, that about um, maturity Christian. Uh, I would want to, you know, I have started a Bible study in my family because I said since I'm learning, I also want to teach. And also I had a ministry for the orphanage children, which I'm not doing now. But after, you know, hearing this course and I want to do counseling, which I think I can be helpful to people in the ministry. Okay. Because this is what a great need uh, that I'm facing around. And mm. uh, I want to grow in this field of counseling, doing, doing the course of counseling. Okay. All right. Yeah. Great. Wonderful. Wonderful. Please explore areas that you can uh, do it. You need to build your knowledge and skill and also how to do it. You know, that's it's a very yeah. important Thing. And there are many courses. There's one in in uh, APC. We do have a course in the second year. I'm sorry, in the next yeah. term. But you may need to build it up a little bit more. Ours is a, ours is a more a general uh, course. But you know, to get into further details, there are other places which I can share with you at a later point of time, Gertrude. Thank you, sister, so much. God okay. bless. Thank you. Let's let's just close with a word of prayer. Can I ask one of the students to pray? Let's pray. Gracious, loving Heavenly Father, we thank you for enabling each one of us to gather here, O Lord. We believe that uh, whatever we learn is uh, from you, O Lord, especially in the field of marriage and family. It's been instituted by you. Help us, O Lord, to lay aside all our anxieties and our concerns about the past, present, and the future. And help us to look forward towards your guidance in dealing with each one of us in this area of our life. We thank you for a uh, sister who's been teaching this course we pray for your grace to continually work in her life so that she will continue to share us equip us and build us in the area of life you know all our hearts and we believe that you will give the desires of our heart in accordance to your will we ask seek and knock everything in the matchless name of our lord and savior jesus christ amen amen, amen. thank you all god bless meet you all next week